Hello everyone, Chris here, and today I'd like to explain classes and functions within Java programming. So, a class is one of the main concepts you need to understand for object-oriented programming, which Java uses uh, at every level of its code. So, a class is effectively a blueprint for a type of object that you're trying to define. So, um, an object is going to basically be um, an instance of that class, effectively, and uh, that's how object-oriented program works. Uh, you have classes which define objects, and then objects are created out of those classes. So objects, um, as an object, you can kind of think of it as an object within the real world, such as if you have a cup, or if you have a soccer ball, whatever. Those objects have uh, certain properties um, <coughs> Uh, that define basically what they are, like they have maybe a diameter, they have a hardness rating, uh, all these little different things that r really make up what that object is. And then the class is the definition of those objects. So uh, you might have a basketball, but then the blueprints of the, that basketball is going to be your class. And everything in Java is basically going to be out of a class at one form or another, including uh, the main function which uh, runs your program or uh, drives your program. And uh, classes, and by extension objects, can contain different methods. Whenever you have a, uh, a function that is created inside of a class, it's called a method, but effectively they mean the same thing. Um, and they can also define different variables, which may be representative of those things I was talking about, like uh, how much money it costs to purchase a shoe, or um, what's the diameter of the cup. Okay, so right here you see public class functions. Every Java program starts with a public class something or another. And, um, and based basic Java, not necessarily in Android, you're going to have the main method as well. But to make up everything else inside of that and the different objects you may be using, you're going to have different classes, you're going to be creating different objects and different functions. So uh, I didn't know exactly which should I explain first, objects or classes, but um, in terms of Java, uh, a function is going to be a, uh, a series of operations that you can repeat and these series of operations are going to be written as a, a kind of like a command that each of those uh, class objects are going to be able to do. So we have the functions class here, and then we have a function down here that makes me a sandwich. So whenever makes me a sandwich gets called, it's going to perform these lines of operations. So you have the series of operations, and they're contained within the function, Whenever the function gets called, it's going to do this stuff. Now, um, there's more to functions than just that, though. You see these parentheses here? Whenever you are defining a function, you can give it parameters. And parameters are basically uh, bits of data or other objects that go into a function that can be used within the function to uh, have different types of output or um, Perhaps if you're doing a mathematical calculation, it could be the input for that math. So um, although a function, every time you call a function, the code is written the same, based on the parameters that, uh, and the, uh, well, the parameters that you have written and the arguments that get passed in uh, as those parameters, the actual result of a function being called can be quite different. Now, uh, in addition to that, you'll see these purple texted keywords over here. Um, Keywords not only apply to func classes, but they also apply to uh, functions. And we haven't really got into exactly what all these keywords mean too much. That's probably going to be the next video. Um, but there's uh, accessibility keywords like public, static, and private. Um, uh, no, private, protected, and public. My mistake. What the static keyword actually means, and I'm going to explain that here because I'm using it a lot, is um, this piece of data although, or this function, or this variable rather, although it is defined within the function's class, it can actually be referenced and called, well called in the case of the function, without um, calling it or uh, taking it straight out of a function's object. So effectively, a, a static function can be called without having a function's object. Um, 
I hope that makes some sense. If it doesn't, let me know. Uh, okay, and then you also have the return type for the function. Now, the return type keyword, um, that is basically what your function is expected to return whenever it is complete. So, for instance, now this function doesn't have a return type because it's void. Void means there is none. Uh, but you can still have a return. So, normally you would have like return here, and whenever return is reached, within a function, the function ends and it returns whatever data it needed to. So it could return five, but that would be like a integer. Uh, that would be an integer return type. So you see when I uh, put an int there, it cleans everything up. And then whenever the function is completed, it returns five. And that five can be used outside of the function. Okay, but uh, that's unnecessary for right this second. So um, we will get into keywords more in the next videos. Um, but uh, for right now, we have this function called make me a sandwich. And it's a static function, which means we don't need to actually create an object out of this class to be able to use this function or to reference this math variable. Um, so we also have a plus addition function, which is kind of an alternate version of make me a sandwich. Basically, it actually calls make me a sandwich, but it does additional functionality on top of that. So one thing you can do uh, within Java programming is to have functions that call other functions. Uh, now that's useful for kind of cleaning up your code and not having any one function be too long, even if it, it's uh, actually very complex in what it does. Um, but you do need to keep in mind, you don't want to nest things too many times because then it can get really confusing. That's kind of a balance to be struck, like how much do you put into one function and how many layers are, of hierarchy are you going to have inside of your functions. Um, and th that's just kind of a, a general design thing you pick up as you go along. But uh, right now, our main method, which if you recall from the earlier videos, uh, the main method of the functions class, which is what is uh, driving this program, what is going to be called first as soon as we hit the run button, is just going to call make me a sandwich. You can see with the two forward slashes that the plus edition has been commented out. So plus edition will not run, make me a sandwich will. So we'll hit the run button right here, save it before launching, um, of course, so that it can uh, basically be running the updated version of the code. And you see here that it will run hello space monkey, the first uh, command or operation, um, the print line. And then it moves on to the second line and does the second print line. As requested, here is your sandwich. Now, obviously, this has not made me a real sandwich. It's just outputting text, or rather, a string of characters um, out to the screen. Making a real sandwich would be much more involved and would actually involve physical hardware. So now we'll go ahead and comment out the make me a sandwich operation. So it's not going to call make me a sandwich directly. And instead, we're going to call the plus addition. And the plus addition, as I mentioned, is going to call make me a sandwich inside of this function. So by calling plus addition, it's not only going to call, it's not only going to do these operations, but it's also going to do these operations. You could kind of think of it as if I had copied these op these um, uh, those lines of code and erased that and put the exact same thing here. What was there before? Make me a sandwich. And this mean pretty much exactly the same thing in terms of the outboard, at least. So um, here we're going to go ahead and run this function for you. And you can see um, it did hello, space monkey. As requested, here is your sandwich. And the result, 100. Now you see that the result was calculated um, by uh, assigning different variables. And A was created by uh, basically copying what the value out of the uh, static integer math variable, which is part of the class, not part of this function. Normally, uh, you couldn't do this. You'd have to be grabbing that, uh, that math variable out of a function's object. But once again, static keyword allows you to do this. So because math was 50 inside of the class, it's A is going to be 50 here. And then you take that value of 50 stored into A, add that to another 50. You combine those two values. You assign it to a new integer, B. You run make me a sandwich, which gets you these two lines of output. And then you get one more third print line, the result outputting the uh, value stored in the B variable to the screen, which is 100. Uh, so there are obviously much more things you can do with uh, functions. 
and we will get into that a lot more in future videos. I just wanted to cover the basic concepts of class and the functions that each class in Java is going to contain. And uh, yeah, it's really important to understand this because in Java, as an object-oriented program, you're going to be creating objects. Your program, um, the, the main class is going to be an object, and that object is going to contain other objects created out of other classes. So you may have your, your main program as one that's the main object to rule them all at the top, but it's going to be utilizing uh, more objects that contain more methods uh, as you go along. And uh, by separating your code into different objects, um, it allows you to clean things up and allow you to uh, reuse a lot of your code. So um, I've been Chris. I hope you found this tutorial on classes and functions useful. And uh, just remember, if a function is inside of a class, it's called a method. Um, if you have a teacher, they'll appreciate you for getting that right. And uh, I will see you guys next time. If you want to check out the Patreon, it's uh, patreon.com slash chris tutorials. And if you have any comments, let me know in the comments section down below. Peace out.